It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer, and thank you so much for joining us. We are joined by Dr. Elaine Haberer. She is a professor of electrical engineering at UC Riverside. She has brought with her a biology major, actually. Her name is Noemi Lacombe uh, from Temecula, and we will explain how they are working together because electrical engineering biology doesn't seem like a fit, but it is. But they're working together at first glance, uh, going to Mira Loma Middle School and teaching the students about solar energy. And look, you brought props, which I love. Why don't we start with you, Noemi, and tell us about what we're seeing before us. Okay, so we have this set up. Um, we have the solar cell right here, and we have this light source hitting the solar cell. So we're trying to teach the students that solar cells absorb light energy and they produce electricity. Right. And right here is a multimeter um, showing us how much is being produced by the solar cell. Now, Elaine, I was under the same impression that the sixth graders were, and that was that it's the heat from the light source that causes the solar cell to collect the energy. I'm wrong. No, actually, actually it's the light. It's the, it's light. the light. So explain that to me where it's not the heat, because I thought you had to be in deserts and warm climates. Wrong. No, no. You can be in warm climates, but you can also be in very cold climates. So you could use a solar cell outside in the snow, um, and it'll work just as well as in the, in the desert. So for example, you brought this ice pack to explain to the students, demonstrate. Okay. So we would just hold it up to the solar cell and have them measure, uh, record what the reading was. And there was no change. Right. I mean, that's because you were basically making the solar cell cold right. and it didn't matter. I'm so glad you explained that to them and me because it really, it doesn't seem intuitive, mm -hmm. but it really is. Talk to me about what it is like for both of you. We'll start with you, Professor. To see the students' eyes light up and when they realize, oh, the light bulb's gone off in my head, just like it's lighting the solar cell. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really great. And so um, what we really try to do is probe their understanding. And so we ask questions and we make sure, because a lot of the students will say, oh, yes, yes, I understand that. But when you ask them to explain it, you become. They think it's the exactly, heat. Exactly. What about for you? I mean, you're not that far off from sixth grade, seventh grade. So what is it like for you to be, the, be back? Um, it's nice. I, I really see the students engage. Right. And they're really making connections in their own life. Mm -hmm. They think of, oh, solar cells. Oh, that's on satellites, you know. So they start making those connections. And I have to admit, and I've said this before to our viewers, the fact that I have two girls, mm -hmm. women, before me makes me very happy. I am the father of two daughters, and I think it's so important that women pursue sciences in the same way that boys do, men do. Let me ask you, though, as I cough for a second, about <coughs> the connection between biology and solar energy, because I never would have thought there'd be a connection, but you're creating one. Yes, yes. So my research looks at using biological materials to build materials for solar cells. <coughs> um, so it's much like an abalone uh, puts together a shell. Uh, we're using biological uh, molecules to put together solar cell materials. Did you ever think that biology and solar energy, electrical engineering, could combine? No, but I was excited when I heard this. <laughs> So what next? What's the next chapter for your students? Because we're, you know, early in the semester. Are you going back and going to show them the next level of solar uh, technology? So um, the experiments that we ran or the activities that we ran are uh, kind of the basis for them to learn about solar. And then they're going to have a solar car project uh, later on in the quarter. I want to be you. <laughs> I'm going to go back to sixth and seventh grade and teach so the kids about solar. And I want to thank you for teaching me that um, cold freezingness doesn't matter mm -hmm. it could be as snowy as ever but the solar light will still work thank you both of us both of you for joining us my name is brad palmer thank you for joining us back to hln